Welcome to a brand new series of Vigant News for You, now on BBC One for the first time, although we'd like to reassure our regular BBC Two viewers that the move to mainstream television will in no way affect the show's content. Good evening, I'm Carol Smiley. <laughs> Well, at least, at least he didn't moon at her, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I split my trousers in front of the Queen. Um, I were you excited at meeting her? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was afterwards. That was, uh, there were 70,000 other people there. Did and, she notice? Uh, 70,000 people clapping and cheering me uh, as I walked across an open football field. I think it would be quite difficult, with my backside hanging out, I think it would be quite difficult mm. not to have noticed me. I may be wrong. Mm. I may be wrong. <laughs> OK, this is the guy that took the, the money. What's his name? Um, Peter Mandelson. Mandelson. Normally. If I get this right, that, that, that guy, Mandelson. Mm. Mandelson. Him. Yeah. Took the money from... Roger? Um, uh, <laughs> Jeffrey. Jeffrey. <laughs> Robinson. Robinson. <laughs> We're getting near. Yeah. Right. Um, it came out in the memoirs that, you know, he took this money, 300 and something thousand, and he's saying, well, you know, because he's the head of the um, Northern Ireland... Is it Irish constituency? Is that right? Um, <laughs> he's, he's sort of Northern Ireland minister, but yes. Northern Ireland. <laughs> so, I'm piecing this together. Yeah. No, yeah. We're getting there. We're getting As you there. can see, I'm... It's going I'm, well. I mean, yeah. Cur current affairs is, is, is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so, uh, them, yeah. <laughs> Have you but... thought of taking a job on our new 10 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> and then, I mean, we've still got a problem on this programme because we're not allowed to say that Peter Mandelson is a, a home owner. <laughs> <laughs> but what's wrong with gay people owning homes? <laughs> Well, it's new director general now. We'll have to see what happens. <laughs> um, I'm strangely moved to BBC Three. <laughs> <laughs> BBC Knowledge. Here we go. <laughs> and it was a, a, a German machine which they used to create code, code. during yes. the war, and it it was deemed unbreakable. And but then it was broken by um, Alan Turing and various others at Bletchley Park during the war. British now. Is that now. right, Richard? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going with the bro right here. Right. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm Perfect glad you're going with me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so pick it, it up. Aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick it up. Give us some sort of street talk. <laughs> yeah. It's You'll be hit by the time we leave the show. <laughs> yeah. Go exactly. home to his wife. Yo, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see that going down awfully well. <laughs> Anyway, there they were. All the... <laughs> <laughs> All the bitches in Hot 8. <laughs> cracking that code yeah, for... He's been waiting to say that. You for can tell. Yeah, Churchill. So how long was this speech? 27 minutes. 57 minutes. Was fact. it really? I yes, didn't it see was. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been amazed if I'd been right. I have no idea. <laughs> I was on holiday when that happened. Mm. Where? <laughs> Between where? Where are we on holiday? Doesn't have anything to do with you. <laughs> well, you mentioned it. The Maldives. Ooh. <laughs> Just outside Essex. <laughs> the nightclub. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, that's William Hague, 14 pints in. Uh, uh, oh, that's a few more than 14 pints. <laughs> And Big Lady there came out and basically... <laughs> right, Big, La Big right. Lady came out and said that, um... Legion M and S small. <laughs> <laughs> it's got two badges shoved down her jumper, I know that. <laughs> She's a virgin, isn't she? Mm. Have you modelled your hair on her? Yeah. <laughs> Shock poll, public say what? We're sick of polls. Yeah. <laughs> yes to cannabis. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's sort of yes in the right yes area. Yes to pot. Uh, yes, so legalised yes. pot is how it's phrased, yes. Uh, more than half think it should be available uh, for sale in government licensed shops. 
Uh, so any suggestions for names of those shops would be gratefully received. <laughs> Pot shop. Joints are us. <laughs> Super drug. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't said anything about the fact he's got a metal tie. I thought you'd have no mentioned his metal tie by now. Is it actually metal? <laughs> it's made from the same material as Anne Widdicombe's knickers. <laughs> Rabbit high on drugs imagines Lord Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Mayor and Rabbit watch other man play an invisible trombone. <laughs> Rabbit in the middle says, How come you got water and I've got orange juice? <laughs> Lord, Lord, Mayor, Lord Mayor saying that's the last time we let the Liberal Democrats in. Look at this. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Hawaii News For You, where debate still rages after last week's show with viewers such as Mr Nicholas Miles sending photographs to prove that Paul Merton has never resembled Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> <laughs> and at rehearsals for Children in Need, producers regret booking Yuri the Dancing Cossack. Are there kangaroos running havoc over some very nice golf course? And... Uh, Beckenham Place Park uh, Golf Club. It is, yes, uh, near Lewisham. Um, um, what has the Mayor of Lewisham done? Did you read What's this? He done? What's the Mayor of Lewisham done? He's yes. sung Timey Kangaroo Down Sport. <laughs> He's appeared on television to appeal for calm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly Jaws, is it? <laughs> Populous of Beckon and running around. The kangaroo! <laughs> Get out of the water! A TV crew did attempt to find it by going undercover, which we can see now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what does kangaroo mean in Aborigine? It means, um, I don't know. Isn't that the story that Captain Cook arrived and, and they saw this strange creature? He said, What's that? And the answer was kangaroo. Then it means, I don't know. Mm. Is the right answer, yes. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, there's the rave party happening. Ministry of Sound are going to be uh, throwing this great big party. Everybody's going to go to the dome at the end of the dome. That's the end of the dome. Everybody goes to a party. Perfect answer. <laughs> Have you been invited in? I'm one of the DJs, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but there were lots of letters in places like the Telegraph saying the Queen actually um, acted correctly. Because mm. protocol is you only do this in the second bit. In the first bit, you go... Do, 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 <laughs> and then you go... Do, do, do. <laughs> in the third bit, you go... <laughs> That's the rave. That's, That's the, the rave. rave. Sorry. <laughs> but Napier really. made a joke. Yes. Terrifically good, this joke. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was in the Sindh province, and he took Sindh, so he sent a telegram back to the Foreign Office um, with one Latin word on it, peccavi, which means, I have sinned. You see? <laughs> 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 Terrifically funny Victorian joke. <laughs> and he wants to bayonet pigeons. I know that bayonet Millions pigeons. of them. <laughs> oh, yes, he does. Did he he did hasn't told he you the have, truth. Uh, a lot of pigeon stuff thrown at him through uh, animal welfare people. They were threatening to throw droppings. I don't know how they were collecting them, scraping them off the plinth. No, or you just something. grab a pigeon, just squeeze in his general direction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've all done it. Don't pretend <laughs> Did you evict someone from Trafalgar Square? Yes, the guy who sells all the bird seed. Mm. And then he sort of complained and he came back again. So it's going to be a bit of a court case. I don't know what Mary Poppins would have to say about all this. It's a bit of a worry. It mm, is. Yeah. Feed the birds. Tuppence a bag. Tuppence a bag. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> very, very moving song, actually. It is. <laughs> all around the cathedral, the saints and apostles. I mean, it's all there. Look down as she sells her wares. This old lady there singing, her, you know, selling her little bits of seed to the uh, pigeons. What's she going to do? <laughs> I think I've just lost the will to live. <laughs> well, that's good news. Yeah, we <laughs> and where's Ken currently appearing in the West End? He's appearing in Geoffrey Archer's play. Oh, yes. 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 He's the voice of the jury. 
unbelievable archers there <laughs> pretending to be tried in the hope that everyone will think he's innocent. And the voice comes out, you're the jury in the audience. I know this because I've been to this play, isn't that sad? <laughs> um, and, and Ken's voice says, we find him not guilty or guilty. But it's usually not guilty. How did you vote? I voted guilty from the minute I sat down. <laughs> <laughs> There's a buzzer. <laughs> I'll pay pressing it. Did you consider OK Magazine for your wedding snaps or...? No, no, A bit no, down no, market? No. Very down market, absolutely. So you went for not. Hello? Oh, yes. Right. Yes. You didn't really, did you? Yeah. You had your wedding in Hello? Yeah. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> NASA tests flying what? Jetpack. <laughs> this one's got two windmills on it. Go for hours. 84 miles an hour, one gallon of petrol. <laughs> He's been reading his papers, hasn't he? Yes, a scooter is, in fact, the answer, but it's, that's the, what it's referring to. There we are. That's the one. That's how they'll accommodate See, that's never going to happen, though, is it? Why is that, then? Well, imagine 15 people coming out of a pub. <laughs> <laughs> 11 o'clock on a Saturday night, taking off in one of them. How long do you think that's going to last? <laughs> I mean, NASA. you know, the best of times you piss against a car wheel up there. <laughs> you know, you go to the tax inspector's house, piss down his chimney. It's a charter for people who want to piss down people's chimneys. That's what it is. Yeah. Ah. Mm, looks like rain. Yep. This looks is like... the uh, the water shortage in the south. Hey. <laughs> hey, that's me. And that's Kent. <laughs> sympathy for these people. Why buy a house that's in the middle of a river? <laughs> they should have known that when they went round there. <laughs> so what, if I may ask, is the Liberal Democrat angle on global warming? We're right? very concerned. Right. <laughs> Do you know what Mr Prescott's uh, response was this week? Unintelligible. <laughs> He said there was growing evidence of increasingly stormy weather. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets past him, no. does it? It's nonsense anyway, because 87 was worse. And no one was talking about global warming in 87. We've always had wild weather. In 1703, a hurricane hit England. You were an undergraduate then. <laughs> involved the whole country. So your message to the people is pull yourself together, it's not as bad as it used to be. <laughs> My message to the people is get a jet ski. Right. <laughs> now they can bring the jet packs out. That's how you can be on your roof and you can go anywhere you like with the jet packs. Bring the jet packs out. The government's stocked up, do you ever you know about this? The government's stocked up jet packs all those years. You should give us all a jet pack now. <laughs> Where's our jet packs? So the government have been storing up jet packs for us? Yeah, exactly. Hoarding jetpacks. They were in James Bond films 30 years ago, so where are they now? <laughs> Who's got them? I bet the Queen Mother's got five. <laughs> <laughs> What's Al Gore been up to this week? What they, they've they all been, been on chat to? shows all week. And mm. America is extraordinary. And politicians just go on cheap comedy shows. <laughs> Yes, this is Prince Edward's TV production company. Do you know how he likes to be known professionally? Tosspot. <laughs> Sir Tosspot. <laughs> no, he likes to be known as Edward Windsor. But he's also known as something else, isn't he? He's the Duke of... What is he? The Duke he's the of... Earl of Wessex. He's Robert the Earl, Earl of a part of England that doesn't exist. I think that's very That's because cool. it's underwater. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, you should visit it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is... Uh... <laughs> Uh, so, why is it a historic and uh, obviously immensely interesting appointment, Ian? <laughs> um, Do you want to phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask the audience? <laughs> um, he's uh, Swedish. Well, he swore we've never had a Swedish person managing. We. <laughs> you see that bit of matey laddiness? <laughs> we. <laughs> oh, it's easy when you know how. We've. Uh, We've never had a foreigner running right. the team before. <laughs> and, uh, a lot of the people are pretty worried about that. Right. <laughs> Is that your... I just don't care. <laughs> uh, since our first show, incidentally, thousands of viewers have asked to see a particular piece of sporting footage again, and only one person has oh, asked no. us not to. Mm. So here oh, it is. No, I know what's coming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why?
One million pounds to p -p pick up penguins. <laughs> Oh, well, this is a story, I think it's the Falkland Islands, I think, where they've noticed that the penguins there have uh, developed this thing. When a plane goes overhead, the penguins watching it go overhead like that. <laughs> and then falls on its back and, and can't get up. <laughs> and they can't work it out why these penguins are doing this. Mm. And so what are we doing about it? The Royal Navy are going out there. And they're going to get pilots to fly over them. Yeah. And see how they react, see yeah. if they do. Yeah. Just go and then out. they're going to give penguins their own mini jetpacks. <laughs> Yes, it is extraordinary. They are p uh, spending a million pounds on this. Uh, they're sending helicopters this year. Do you know what they're planning to do next year? If we've got any submarines, no doubt they'll be going mm. to. But we haven't. Uh, we've got a German U-boat. We could send we've it. We've got a U-boat, yep. Yeah. yeah, well, we're hiring. The Royal Navy is hiring a U-boat. That's right. Do you know how much that's costing us? Yeah, £20 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't hired one recently, have you? Uh, it's six, not in the last ten years, is <laughs> it? Right. £6,500. Boy, that's gone up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and where's one of our submarines stuck at the moment? Wolverhampton. <laughs> it's an airing cupboard. Yeah. The navigation system went completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> How much longer are you going to be yeah. in there? Or I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Gibraltar, in fact. Is where it's stuck. Um, and which penguin is it that uh, is it affected in... Um... Barry. It's not Barry, no. <laughs> <laughs> is it not Barry? <laughs> well, it must be Gareth, then. <laughs> Mary. No. Barrison. Mary penguin? No, they're all, they're all fine. Uh, King penguins, uh, Gentoos and macaroni penguins, apparently. <laughs> macaroni penguins? <laughs> Why don't they just invest in it's loads of mattresses? <laughs> foam rubber content <laughs> so the penguin goes back and then bounces up again <laughs> and you'll be all right brilliant um I don't if know the navy are watching <laughs> yes we could yeah, save make them a million foam pounds. rubber trousers <laughs> <laughs> then if you get rid of the mattress it doesn't matter where they fall then because they'll just bounce back up again yes if only we'd thought of that too late uh, mind this... you when they were diving for fish their arse would just float at the top wouldn't they? <laughs> that's why you're a scientist looking at this sort of stuff <laughs> if you left it to me it'd be no good <laughs> The uh, Sun generously spent time and effort explaining how penguins falling over might look uh, were any of its readers unable to imagine it. Uh, here are the penguins unaware of any aircraft. Uh, this is them noticing the helicopter. And uh, this is the result of it. Ian Hislop, Jermaine Greer, Charles Kennedy and Paul Merton. Have you kind of run out of budget on this? <laughs> well, the photographs getting a bit expensive these days. Uh, no, we just thought the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is it about homosexual relationships at university? <laughs> so, um, I didn't go to university. <laughs> Book publisher. Um, would you like to explain? Well, Germaine's published lots of books. I've, I've done a couple I, of books. Right. Paul's done a couple of books. I've done a book. Right. And that Ian one publishes right. Private Eye, but that's not quite the same thing. No. <laughs> ah, publisher. so Ian's odd one out. Odd one out. Is the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, how can it be the wrong answer? Because um, Ian's the only one who hasn't published a book under his own name. Yeah. So therefore, he's the odd one out. That ipso facto QED. <laughs> Maybe your odd one out, Paul. There's not my odd one out. Oh, right, then, then I'll have the points. <laughs> well, we've been on lists uh, of most power powerful list? people in Britain. Explain. Well, yeah. they keep doing these lists and telling people like me, who are conspicuously powerless, that we're absolutely. Well, I've never been on the list, so I must be the odd one out. Is the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the three of us Please that have, have been on these power things, whatever they are, it's who the... comes top, bottom and middle? Yes, what's the order? Well, it's intriguing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is, I should explain, the Observer list of uh, the really? 300 most powerful people in Britain. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I do beg your pardon. That was awfully rude of me. <laughs> Ian is 235. Just, just uh, above Keith Chegwin, am I? 
<laughs> Charles, you were 219th most powerful person in, in Britain. 219th? You were up 10 places. That must be because you're now leader. And where's Jermaine? Uh, Jermaine, uh, she is 198, so you're yeah. the highest. Hey, well done. <laughs> Which uh, Animal Capers bring us romping to the end of tonight's scrap, uh, where it appears that uh, both Paul and Charles and Ian and Jermaine both have ten points each. So in the time-honoured tradition of uh, quiz shows, we play uh, stone, paper, scissors. So Ian and... <laughs> I've been training for this, such an eventuality. Yes. <laughs> On the count of three, one, two, three... Uh. <laughs> a lot of work went into that. It's a whole back team that you don't see. <laughs> I'd like to thank my sponsor for helping me over the last few years. <laughs> How many ways did a dream come true? <laughs> I'm gutted. If I'd had lottery money, I would have won. <laughs> And one or two celebrities came a cropper this week. Is it Mary Parkinson? Uh, no, it's Bill Tidy, cartoonist for Private Eye. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a celeb. He's a genius. <laughs> uh, yes, he... Did he celebrity? Not, he lost a... Best artist 000. in the country. <laughs> You're a celebrity. Bill Tidy's got a job. <laughs> Jeffrey Archer's house is completely underwater. Excellent. <laughs> it's not true. true, I just said it for effect. <laughs> Archaeologist in a hole. This is the sad case of the man in Japan, who uh, was quite a famous archaeologist. He's found lots of things. He suddenly got a bit suspicious because he was finding more than other ar archaeologists. He was top of the archaeologist Premier League. He was, uh, you know, nobody was near him. He had so many points in hand. For, for discovering things. It turned out he was just putting things in the ground and going back the next day and saying, oh, look what I found. <laughs> and they, they get photographs of him doing it. Mm. Just stuff from his house and just put it in the ground. <laughs> so, no, it's somewhere around. Oh, it's in there. Oh, look at that. This is amazing. I, I'm, I'm amazed. But I thought he was making all that up. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Is, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Uh, this is the fish in question. Um, this is remember? the saddest advert you've yeah. ever done, Angus. <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> but it's just a stuffed oh, thing oh. that sits there. Uh, so you think, Paul? I was talking about you. Oh, right. <laughs> a thousand years of technology. This is what we have to show for it. <laughs> a fish that sings. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and George Bush. And George yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a reason why he's been, he'd been chosen. Because he was mistaken by someone in the street uh, this year. For, you know about this? for Greg Dyke. <laughs> was he mistaken for Ian? Oddly enough, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? He was mistaken by an autograph hunter uh, for Ian. And, and afterwards he said, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. <laughs> Which barking nonsense means at the end of tonight's sorry tale, this week's lazy dogs are Paul and Sean with 12, while this week's quick brown foxes are Ian and Rich with 13. And uh, since Ian's team has more points as a tribute to our American guest, I declare Paul's team the winner. <laughs> <laughs> can't we send in our lawyers? Recount. Mm. For the next six months. <laughs> no, you can't afford it. Uh, My so... brother Jeb said this was a done <laughs> deal. <laughs> <laughs> can I just at this point uh, mm. apologise for feeling a little hoarse? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's just that we're old friends. <laughs> I once caught hepatitis A from hospital food. <laughs> did. I was in hospital for something else and I also contracted hepatitis and the doctor came round and he said, oh, you've just got that off lunch. <laughs> and did you sue? Who? Did you sue? No, I didn't sue, right, no. Okay. Did you? No. <laughs> it would be an odd lawsuit, wouldn't it, me suing on your behalf? <laughs> well, why not? But it wouldn't make any kind of sense at all, Paul. Does everything have to make some kind of sense, Angus? 
How can we allow the world of fantasy and imagination to transport us to a better place where our throats are all right? <laughs> she should legs. get her own jetpack. <laughs> she wants to go around the world, she doesn't have to stretch her legs. She can have her own jetpack, she can go where she likes. She can fly at night, the Canary Islands one day, go to the, you know, Portugal the next. Mm. Or get a jetpack and tie her feet down. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like your own jetpack, Jeremy? It'd be lovely. Yeah, yeah, there's two of us. Why can't we have them? <laughs> yeah. Well, why can't you have them? Why don't you go and buy one? Well, where where do you buy them? Jetpack shops. <laughs> I'm going to make a note of that. <laughs> Before becoming the chief executive of the Dome, what was Pierre Yves Gerbeau in charge of at Euro Disney? That's uh, this way, Angus. No. Oh, is that this way? <laughs> Quite a simple system, Angus. If the light goes on, you look this way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Anne Robinson's exactly simple, quaking in her boots, <laughs> is she? <laughs> Guess no. who's the weakest link, link in yeah. this quiz? <laughs> As chairman of the Millennium Commission, who did Culture Secretary Chris Smith write to this week asking for more money for the dome? Uh, Ian. Linda. <laughs> Uh, it's a nice very... try, it's the right oh, no. side. Oh, no. <laughs> they are very similar. Well, Ian and Linda. Linda. <laughs> oh, it's pretty offensive to Linda, isn't it? <laughs> Doesn't do you any favours either. <laughs> That's bewitched, is it? Uh, yes. Are you familiar with their work? I'm more of an S Club 7 guy. <laughs> yeah. What international event is going to be staged at the Dome later this month? Miss World. Miss World on the 30th of November, and who's hosting it? Uh, Eric Morley. <laughs> <laughs> Only in spirit. Yes, I think probably not, given the circumstances. Um, more American, really. Uh, Eric Morley. <laughs> <laughs> the, the people that are local. Yeah. Village, isn't it? Yeah. Celebrating. Just outside Swansea. Mumbles. Mumbles. Mumbles, yeah. Mm. Mumbles. Mm. Mumbles. That's where she's from. Mm. Yeah. I was born there. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're Welsh? Uh, technically. But <laughs> 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 well, I'm not wearing half of a gorilla suit, which is... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all about chads, isn't mm. it? which is the, the, the mark that those punching machines makes. And the argument at the moment is over dimple chads. If there's a good, honest American hole in it, it's a Republican vote. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but if there's a dimple, it's a sort of liberally Democrat. <laughs> uh, we can have a look at... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a sitcom in that. At home with the chads. <laughs> You've got the hanging chad, he's like the public hangman. You've got the swinging chad, he's the groovy teenager. The tri chad, he's in the Chinese gang. And the pregnant one's obviously the one who's always, you know, pregnant. <laughs> I'll write it now, actually. <laughs> it's the chads, the chads are coming. Yes. <laughs> Can't wait to see it. Uh, the actual allegation. You'll probably be in it. <laughs> Won't I'll just be the neighbour next door. <laughs> <laughs> what is the theory about... Cos it was a very unlikely winner for an ITV quiz show. Rather she... agreeable woman who lives in Fulham. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to which winners? Well, the ones who, who live in less agreeable <laughs> houses in Fulham, I suppose. <laughs> what are you rabbit them about? <laughs> <laughs> you silly Welsh man. <laughs> My granddad was the Earl of Albemarle. <laughs> yes, we can say it. It's not true in your case. <laughs> I would have thought he was true. King Kong, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he should be very worried. They're actually 750 times more likely to die mm. in an asteroid impact than to win the National Lottery this weekend, so... Maybe, just maybe. I see that last thing about you. are laughing. You know. no, How do I make you fear. believe? How do I make you understand this? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> No, no, that's a light, but... Oh, yeah. it, 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 <laughs> a shine! And, uh, of course, if, if it do, does hit, then the evolution will be thrown right back and we'll all end up looking like uh, Paul. <laughs>
Are you a keen astronomer? No, not really. Oddly enough, I was talking to Lorraine. <laughs> oh, so you didn't use anyone's name there? <laughs> that person over there started asking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny place to sit. <laughs> when this program goes out, will you sit behind the television set? <laughs> Is that Mrs. Thatcher in a new role as stand-up comic? Is this thing that the organ put in? Here's one. Here's one. Here we go. Here we go. This man walks into a pub. All right, shut up. Shut up. Tinky Winky's a boy and he's got a handbag. Yep. And when Tinky Winky was in America, didn't the didn't the Americans see that it was outrageous that he had a handbag because that would be terrible. Yes. Don't know why? Well, I think uh, it was suggested it might be a gay um, yeah, that's right. thing, How's and it? it was actually a magic bag. That's what um, people thought Margaret Thatcher was for about ten years, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's to... <laughs> magic bag. <laughs> magic bag. Just mic on. Um, Sit on. I think <laughs> it's to do with handbags. Uh, he paid £100,000. He said uh, she never had the level of credit she deserved. <laughs> <laughs> well, she should have changed to another credit card. <laughs> 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 Should have changed to another credit card. <laughs> Which one of those mine is, is yours? Mine is the silly one in the middle uh -huh. with the little mm. heart on it. Mm. That is quite silly. Yeah, yeah. Is it very silly. Who'd <laughs> <laughs> have a handbag made of stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have something else in common, of course, with Tinky Winky, which we just stumbled upon the gay icon thing. Me and Tinky Winky. <laughs> yeah. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh, I was on the front of Boys, you know, the, the gay magazine. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said that too quickly. Don't you have homosexuals in Wales? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're, you're, you're confusing me with a Welsh person. Mm. But you said you were born in Wales. I was, yeah. Then you're so, Welsh. There are other defining characteristics of nationality. Well, apart from the country that you're born in. <laughs> Your parents' nationality is one, on the whole. Well, the other is where you that live. That doesn't affect your nationality. If you're born in Wales, you're Welsh. No, it isn't true, actually. <laughs> right, I'm going to be Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> Were you born in Sweden? No, but my furniture was made there. <laughs> Share any genetic material with the wood? Oh no, no, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's Glennis up to at the moment? Well, and she's seen someone on the choir. You're <laughs> 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 looking at me as if it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and now she's writing a Labour anthem. No. Uh, Labour's listening. It's called. Is it? Yeah. What's the tune? Uh, well, it's one that she's composed. Do you want me to sing it for you? Yeah, yes. go on, anyone. No, Two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we can Labour's couldn't... listening. Labour's listening. Everyone's <laughs> telling them to get started. <laughs> <laughs> we've been in power for years, but we've still got ears because we're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Have you any idea where he was born? Yeah. Where? Hartscourt. <laughs> uh, no, he was born oh. in uh, Prestatyn in Wales. Oh. Just like you, Ian. Nos weith tha, dwi'r fer ganed i o Hwmri, ac os ydi hwn i'n gwneud, fi'n gwmri rhywun hapus. You do in... What does that mean? He said, I am a twit, and I was born in Wales, which makes me a Welshman. <laughs> last week was completely wrong and I apologise particularly to Paul Merton who I called uh, a twit last week and I say that he's right all the time. <laughs> Clyde Cymru. <laughs> what he said. Rough translation. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is the... a rough translation. Well, yeah, I was born in Wales, weren't I? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, uh... Uh, expressing all the things that she'd had to repress while stopping for the traffic lights and and doing that maneuver, conforming to bourgeois mirror stuff signal like maneuver. signals. Exactly, yeah, you know. Right. Well, all <laughs> <whole shit. laughs> How long have you had that button? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After it was twelve foot big. Mm. It was a very big photocopy. Where? Uh, in his office. <laughs> He's got a very very large office. Uh, where's your bullshit button? Go on, press that. <laughs> <laughs> Disappeared. Curious. Uh, after the row, over. Beep. I've got one. <laughs>
After the row over Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I wish I'd known about that ten years ago. <laughs> After the row beep. over Browns. <laughs> Next, what is a chimpanzee's job? Reading the news. Is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Packman. He said that reading stuff out loud from all the cue was something that a chimpanzee could do. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of an insult to chimpanzees. No, uh, no way. Oh, please. Don't put yourself down, we'll do it. Uh, <laughs> you don't um, put yourself down in the animal in, hospital sense. Yeah, right, <laughs> <thank you. laughs> Which, uh, wayward finishing means at the end of the day, uh, well, both teams seem to have ten points, so I'll have to invent a tie-break question. Um, <laughs> What is the capital of Albania? Tirana. Is the right answer. Very good. <laughs> it should be on Animal Hospital, that dog. Poor little dog. He's, he's got, this dog's got rainbow-itis. <laughs> little fella. Look at that, he's gone. <laughs> I always thought he was Australian. <laughs> Who? On which... Uh, Who did you want to say uh, <laughs> Will Paris, uh, we say well, thank you to... Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you I'm actually doing, doing, doing Nelson Mandela. <laughs> Anyway, the Queen's Speech. Yeah. <laughs> um, how was it modernised and uh, what was changed about this year? There were one or two things. She did a rap version, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of various things that... Uh, well, what you been... were thinking of and what the rest of us were thinking about is two different things. <laughs> what were you thinking about? I was thinking about the way in which it had been modernised. You were an inquisitive person, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Questions every week. Questions is... <laughs> what if you read the papers like me and Ian, you wouldn't... You'd, you'd know all this stuff. <laughs> Conservatives are generally sexy people, you know. <laughs> we noticed, we did notice. I'm thinking yes. Anne Whittacombe here. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true you never wear underpants? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not think this programme's going slightly down market when you, <laughs> when you find yourself turning to one of our guests and asking them if they wear underpants or not? <laughs> Well, he's well, famous. BBC <laughs> One, mate, you've got to pull your finger out. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> BBC Two, you wouldn't get away with it. No. Um, and you're wearing underpants? I uh, maybe. <laughs> but not where you would expect me to wear them. <laughs> <laughs> there is someone benefiting. Uh, there are one or two people benefiting from uh, the US elections, in fact. Uh, psychiatrists in America, apparently. Or well, people are very stressed out. Yes. There's no winner. Election anxiety is what they call it. And lawyers. <laughs> And lawyers, obviously, yeah. Um, and a, a place called St Chad's Church they, in Excuse Litchfield. me, is this building under attack? <laughs> <laughs> you hear all those, those yes. blood booms? I think it must be fireworks. It, all bushes got in and pressed the button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sick of executing people one at a time. Let's do the whole... <laughs> I'm looking good, aren't I? <laughs> what do you think? Looking slimmer, yeah. certainly. I'm yeah. glad you mentioned it. <laughs> I wore a jumper three weeks ago and everybody talked about it. I've lost three and a half stone in two years and nobody's bloody mentioned it. <laughs> well, just for that, I'm going to get fat now. <laughs> <laughs> three and a half stone you've lost? Yeah. Oh, do don't that? encourage him, Angus. <laughs> Oh, they finally turned into Weight Watchers. <laughs> yeah, good, right. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> and I've had a nice haircut. Don't you think it's a nice haircut? <laughs> I hadn't noticed you'd had a cut, actually. Haven't you? No. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'd notice if you had your haircut, Angus. I have, actually, Paul. Yes, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> this turned into breakfast TV. <laughs> no, she does like you, doesn't she, Delia? I, I like her. I love Nigella's writing. I love her recipes. Would you have lesbian sex with her? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
be very hard to have any other sort of sex with her. <laughs> what, for you? For me. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're thinking of yourself there, aren't you? That's the best way. Oh, I suppose so. <laughs> Have you finished now? <laughs> On the lesbian sex tack. Um, I don't suppose you took any photographs. Did you? <laughs> I'll show you later. Do you know how it's heated, this place? Solar? Oh, it's got to be solar. Uh, vegetable oil. Right. Quite what we can do with the vegetable oil, I don't know. Then you just saying vegetable oil didn't help anybody. Because you don't know how the vegetable oil is actually going to heat the building. You just said vegetable oil, and I don't know how it heats, so why bother telling us that? <laughs> it's not even useless information. Well, it's not useless information, because, in fact, it's not even information. It's just useless. <laughs> <laughs> the information is that it's heated with vegetable oil. How? You don't know. <laughs> so how do we believe you might as well say, well, apparently it's going to be heated by uh, corn on the cob? <laughs> they put the vegetable oil in the boiler. Yeah. And then that would heat the water that So you do on. know? I'm guessing. <laughs> well, you're guessing wildly. I mean, it's no good. <laughs> this programme's going out on television. There's dozens of people watching this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, let's go look at the Lord Mayor's office. It's all good vegetable oil. It's all going to the boiler. La la. <laughs> you get along with bags of uncooked chips, chucking them in. <laughs> okay, it's not vegetable oil, it's solar heating. You were right. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, featuring highlights of this week's headlines, along with some, none or many, from this week's uh, guest publication, the always reliable Worm Digest. <laughs> I think we should have another guest publication instead of that. I nominate this one, Angus the Magazine. <laughs> okay. so, Ian and Angus, let's have a look at your first one. It's Angus what? <laughs> Angus, the person who hasn't been told anything about this. <laughs> Angus Day. No, nearly, nearly. Nearly good. Uh, I'm gonna have to I like the way you one. laugh at your own jokes, Ian. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good, thank you. Must get lonely <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> so, well, then, um, it's like eating Angus. your own food. I'll no. give you a clue. <laughs> <laughs> it's what you are. <laughs> Angus Host. No, I'm going to have to give it to you. It's Angus Bull. In central London, there's evidence that Railtrack has taken over the management of public telephone boxes. <laughs> <laughs> See, you get the funny pictures, we get a bunch of stuff. things you could say on that one, or you could say, well, look, when are these traffic lights going to change? <laughs> it's not here all week. <laughs> <laughs> one point can we say to the other, Simon, I told you not to knock that first one over, you wouldn't listen. <laughs> you won't, what's the next one? There's a suspicion that the Teletubbies have been conned by a double glazing salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Giant moth loses wing over East Anglia. <laughs> And in Hollywood, producers finally decide who's to play the lead in The Exorcist 4. <laughs> Andrew Dickham experiences her first orgasm since 1958. <laughs>